What's up Faith family? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tatiana and this is where I create faith-based content mixed with other things that I find interesting or, you know, a touch of creativity every now and then. And as you can tell by today's title, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my reasons for quitting my teaching job after a year. <laughs> So before I get started in the video's content, I really, really want to encourage you guys to share this video if you found it helpful, after you've watched it to the end, of course, with someone that you know who is in the education field, maybe a teacher who's currently studying, or someone who's considering becoming a teacher. I really think that this video might be helpful for them and if you check out other videos on my channel and you like the family over here please feel free to subscribe and after you do all of that <laughs> give this video a thumbs up it really helps to motivate me without further ado let me jump straight into it. So I decided to become a teacher for two reasons. Number one, I had a lot of people around me who basically encouraged me to become a teacher um, by telling me that, you know, I really think this would be a great fit for you. I think you'll have a lot of fun and make a big impact. And I can see that, you know, you genuinely have a passion for teaching people, which I do. And the second reason is that I really felt that this was the direction that God was leading me in. I felt at peace knowing that I would be, you know, becoming a teacher. In no particular order, one of the reasons that I decided to leave the institution was because I became very overwhelmed by the academic challenges at the school. I had my heart broken <laughs> when I started to realize or when the condition of the school really started to dawn on me. And as a result, I felt so overwhelmed by the reality that even though I was doing a good thing and I was helping a lot of students, I was not able to break ground as much as I wanted to or as much as I needed to. And after a while, it started to affect my quality of work. I started to be so discouraged. I started to slack off with lesson planning. I started to feel frustrated at the students, which is never right. And I did not want to continue in an environment where I knew I was not mentally prepared for the long haul. When you are teaching at a school where students are severely academically challenged, um, matriculating from primary schools, not being able to read and write at the level that they should be, or do simple pre prima things like um, writing their names properly or um, reading content that is way below their level, um, it can start to affect you. Expectation versus reality is very real and you just have to prepare yourself mentally. I had an idea of the school's academic standing, but I really didn't know until I, I, I started teaching there where it became clearer that this is what I, I was up against. All right, so I want to quickly mention that one of the reasons why um, number one or this first reason was so intense is because I teach a core subject so I teach English language and literature and you can just imagine um, how much <laughs> I would be grinding the students insecurities every day um, forcing them to confront their weakest point which is literacy and you know being able to master um, one of if not the most important subject areas so that um, played a very big role in in 
a lot of the things that I that I experienced. Tied to that first reason is my next reason, which is perhaps the most intense reason why I decided to stop teaching at the institution and that is the students behavioral challenges. Now it's common knowledge that um, when a child is um, having difficulties with literacy or just generally not being able to see school as useful for whatever reason um, they start to give trouble. <laughs> they will do things that Yes, they are responsible, but um, it's really so sad of the length that they will go um, to say things or do things um, that you can't blame them for entirely. I've had students insult me. I've had students body shame me. There were days when I went to school and I just felt invisible. There were days when I would step into my class and I'm the only one there and my students aren't absent. They just choose not to come. <laughs> I've had so many bad experiences and I felt as though, even with my heart of compassion, this is not something that I would continue with because it became emotionally taxing, mentally taxing, physically draining, the fights, the shouting, the insults, the blatant disregard for my authority. So many things that I had to cope with on a daily basis. Some days were um, worse than others, but at the end of the day, if you are not used to that type of environment or if you don't have that mental capacity to deal with these situations or to deal with these students' behavioral challenges, especially when it's most times targeted at you, then you will have a very hard time like I have um, being in a school like that. I want to make a little mention of the fact that I have taught even though it was for a very long time very short time sorry I've taught at a school with similar academic um background but I was not privy to the the behavioral challenges because it was online and so even if I could wrap my head around what I was up against academically I was not prepared for what I went through um when it came on to being in the physical space with the students. All right, so the third reason I decided or that influenced me to leave the institution is not necessarily um, or did not stay a big issue for me because I had learned to sort of maneuver some of the challenges I was facing, but um, became an influence nonetheless. And that is where staff is concerned. Now, I know all the cliche terms, no workspace or work environment is perfect. Nobody's perfect. You have to learn how to deal with different personalities, yada, yada, yeah. I get that. But I easily discovered or quickly discovered working at the institution that staff culture was already set. The atmosphere when it comes to that was already set and it's either you adjust to it or work with it or just leave things alone because people won't make adjustments for you and that's just the plain truth if they don't want to or if you don't necessarily fit in their circle of personality or taste you you're on your own where that is concerned and so there are a lot of things that i didn't like um sometimes i'd have co-workers having certain types of conversations or doing certain things this didn't affect me a whole lot but most of the times i was just irritated and frustrated and i i put this at the bottom of the list even though i said i wasn't ranking them but at the end of the day um those things matter you know, I started to adjust. I started, you know, to say, okay, you know, whatever. And really, I was only there for a year. Don't feel as though if you can't deal, 
you are, you know, less of a teacher or you're too sensitive or you're too thin skin. I actually had a confrontation once with um, a fellow coworker who insulted my personality because um, I was speaking for my own right. I was exercising my right as a person and she was offended by that. And those things are not healthy for a workspace because there's a difference between criticizing someone's work ethic versus criticizing someone's personality, which doesn't make any sense. So before I make this video too, too long, I just want to jump straight into my advice the advice for teachers coming into the system or if you're considering becoming a teacher now listen carefully let me see how long i've been talking all right that's not bad so my first piece of advice that i would give to teachers coming in or even if you're still in the system all right so if you're coming in do your research and i don't mean looking up the school's motto and the principal and what uniform the students wear just for the interview i mean do your research find out about the school's history um maybe if you can um get in touch with a teacher who is at the school or a teacher who used to work at the school that can um share their honest opinion and experience about what they yeah, experience about the school, that would be helpful because you need to understand what you're getting yourself into. So ask as many questions as you can. Um, find out as much as you can about the school and take the time. Don't just rush into it because I really believe this should be common knowledge that teaching is not like every other job, you are going into a space where you can have such a great impact on another human's life and you have to take that seriously and you have to be prepared for what it is that um, you are doing. All right, so similar to number one, seek advice from older professionals seek advice from people who have been in the field for a long time who can guide you and help you with some of the challenges that you might encounter i know this might be hard especially um if you are not someone who's readily inclined to you know putting yourself out there or being vulnerable but this can be so so helpful for you while you are in the field so take that leap of faith pray about it pray about who you can talk to let god lead you to that person or just use your discernment and observation and really really um ask some of those questions maybe you want to brief the person to say okay these are the type of questions that I want to ask if you're willing to answer and really get them to, to share with you that wisdom that they would have garnered in their experience as a teacher. Right. My third piece of advice that I would give that honestly is that piece of advice that I wish I had taken um a lot seriously during my experience that I believe would help to kind of make my experience a lot different in terms of better and that is to fight from a spiritual perspective. If you are an educator of faith and you believe that you have the opportunity to make such a great impact on another human's life and to take that student from one level to the next or to just do so much um, for God or just so many good things, then you know that you are going to be a target for the enemy. The devil is going to come after you with all that he has. <laughs> and it's important that you keep that spiritual perspective. The, 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 the reality that evil is rampant in our schools is real and should be taken seriously. So 
take the time always to pray. Seek God about different situations that you're going through. Ask him to help you. Ask him to heighten your discernment and to distinguish. Well, not really distinguish because he's really the main character behind 100% of the challenges that we're experiencing here. Satan, that is. So really um, make sure that you are fighting always from a spiritual perspective and it might not always look like speaking in tongues and running up on the gates of hell but it will help you a lot with how you respond versus reacting to situations all right the final piece of advice that i want to give my teachers out there especially if you are new to the field do not feel guilty about wanting to leave even if you have not been working for a very long time. I say this because it is it has been stigmatized a lot or young teachers have been stigmatized a lot for wanting to leave the field after a short time. A lot of persons will make it out to seem that to seem like you don't have any grit or your reasons are invalid, like who leaves a job because they're stressed, <laughs> right? And that is not something that you should focus on. Sometimes you have to understand that you need the best version of you in that classroom. Don't feel as if you have to stay in an environment that is not good for you because of what other persons might think. God is the only person that should tell you otherwise. And so if you follow advice number number two, or was it number three, right? It will be easier for you because if God is 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 telling you to stay in an environment for a particular reason then you will know but if it's a case where you you're you're not functioning or you are you're really just guilt tripping yourself into staying in an environment that isn't good for you then you won't be making a good decision it's not an easy decision and i don't want to make it seem that way um, even up to the, the my last day or when I had told some of my students one young lady was um, brought to tears when I told her you know when I told them that I was leaving some students openly rejoiced <laughs> you know others could care less but at the end of the day it's not an easy decision and I would feel this way um, if I was leaving at any point in time and yeah I, I, I know that my my impact was felt and I, I know that I have done something good and I'm at peace with my decision and I'm just so excited um, for where God is leading me and taking me and I am so grateful to have this break and <laughs> I am just making note of all the things that I want to do differently and just getting myself prepared holistically for the next time that I step into the classroom. So yeah guys, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found it helpful and again if you did, share it with someone even if it's not a teacher. Sharing this video was definitely a blessing. I was really excited about it even though I have <laughs> I still have mixed feelings. But yeah guys, I will catch you in my next video and until then and forever, keep the faith family.